Experts are expecting that the US is going to fall into a recession by the end of this calendar year. What all has been going on? We've had the war in Ukraine. We've got that. the ongoing trade wars with China. We have the collapse of a number of regional banks in the States. Obviously, Inflation peaked at 9.1% in the States back in June, but there are a few key metrics that are also signaling that we're going to move into a recession in the near future. We have things like the US 10-year minus two-year Treasury yield spread has been inverted since July last year, and that is a general indication of a recession within 12 months. In simple terms, a recession is a period of decline in an economy which lasts for more than six months, so in reality over two financial quarters. During a recession, people lose their jobs, businesses close, and economic activity decreases. So what does this mean for us in the UK? What happens in the US, we will be caught up in it. We've seen sky high inflation figures. Everything is becoming more expensive. That weekly shop has almost doubled in price from what I can see. And filling the car is starting to get a little bit better, but it is still more expensive than it was a year ago. And Hopefully, energy bills will come down a little bit. But what all have we seen? We've seen the S&P 500 dropped at the end of last year by about 30%. Reality is, if the US goes into recession, we could be seeing a 20 to 30% reduction in the value of things like the S&P 500. And that will have a knock-on effect with everything going on in the UK. How can we be prepared for what may come? Some very simple steps that we're gonna take you through. First step that we must take is figure out our budget and start to build an emergency fund. You will hear this from lots of people. Try and figure out how much you're spending and spend less. There are other things to take into account as well. If we manage to have the car issue have the central heating break in the house. You want to be able to pull on money and not have to liquidate and pull out your assets. Leave your assets in for the long run. As Charlie Munger says, don't interfere with the compound interest. Leave that money there and try and leave it for the long term. Step number two, let's focus on the debt. So key to getting ready for any recession is getting your finances in order and trying to tackle your debt. Two different ways of doing this, you can either go for the debt avalanche or the debt snowball side of things. On debt avalanche, you go for the biggest interest rates and you start paying off those. So it might be a store card and then working your way down to a car loan, say for example. Or on the debt snowball, as with everything, start with the smallest debt that you've got and pay that off and then move to the next smallest. Both have their different pros and cons and it all depends on your personality type on which works better for you. If you're somebody who likes to see little targets and you want to just chunk those off, go for that debt snowball. Go for that couple of hundred pounds that you owe, then move on to the next one at say 500 pounds, the next one at 1,000 pounds and just keep doing it that way. What is really important is that you actually take action and start to extinguish those debts. The third step is invest in yourself. Nobody else is going to do this. As with the Boy Scouts motto, be prepared. Who knows what's coming around the corner? You could end up being really unfortunate and being made unemployed. During recessions, lots of people do lose their jobs. So having an up-to-date CV is really important. It may help you land a job if the worst happens and you lose your job. Or another idea and one that I really recommend is you invest in yourself. Go and do some continuous professional development. Go and do courses that build up your skills, that give you other strings to your bow. It might be learning how to coach something, something that you are passionate about and that you have a skill about. Why not get a qualification so that you could potentially take this forward and make you one more valuable to your employer and save you from losing your job or have something else that you could use to actually plug a gap while you get a new job.
step four is looking at having more than just that single income stream. Top entrepreneurs tend to have multiple income streams with some of the more successful seven, eight, nine, ten different income streams. So why not have a look at what could you do just to bring some extra money in when it comes around to any of your insurances, policies coming up for renewal, go and be more savvy about how you actually save yourself some money. Go and do a comparison site. Uh, have a look on Money Saving Expert. Have a look at Quidco. See, can you get any kickbacks on these things that you just have to have? You might as well get a little bit of benefit from it. Or you could look at increasing your income. Why not ask for a raise? Be cheeky. Make yourself with all these extra qualifications that you've got. Go in and go, I'm now worth a little bit more and try and negotiate at your performance and development conversations a bit more money. Or you could look at a side hustle. I've done a video on side hustles. Go and have a look at that. But one that I'm doing at the moment is match betting. And this isn't betting per se. This is where you strategically place two bets and that covers all the potential outcomes of an event. And as a result, no matter which result comes in, you will win or make a little bit of a loss to then capture free bets, which you then make your profit on. Any winnings are tax free. Um, so why don't you have a look at outplay.com, which is the platform that I use for my match betting. There are people out there say you could make thousands of pounds. Some people do make thousands of pounds a month. I just dabble in it and make 100, 200 pounds a month. It's all tax free. Why not give it a go? And then be smarter with what we actually do with our investing monies. Stock market will quite often price in what is going to happen in the future. It is very much forward looking. You will see a slump potentially lagging any actual metrics that tell us that we're really in a recession and they also tend to rebound before the economy has started to improve as well and as Warren Buffett says be wary when others are being greedy when others are fearful there will be opportunities out there to buy things at a discount so what we want to do is keep some money on the side for opportunities like this or something else that you may want to choose to do is look to invest into your pension pot, be that your workplace pension or whether you want to start investing into a self-invested personal pension as SIP. There are five very simple steps and actually they're just steps that we should be doing all the time and looking at how do we get ourselves into a better financial position and start to drive things forward. I've recently read a book called The Barefoot Investor. I'll put a link down below to it and it talks about all of these different types of approaches and I've got a number of different accounts where they all do different things. Some might be to plan to go on a holiday in the smile account or it might be a fire extinguisher to look at dealing with those unexpected issues or looking at getting rid of your debts. Why don't you go and have a look at this playlist which will give you some ideas about different exchange traded funds that you could potentially look into investing some of that saved money. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.